wondered, um, you know, obviously you had a big role in Lord of the Rings as well recently and this, and I wondered, they're both huge fantasy shows, but very different characters. So how, how did that compare for you? Great. I, I love the idea of being, this idea of being an actor, and you can play, over here you can play this nice guy who's an elder who's looking after people, and over here you can play the most evil person <laughs> in the universe. Yeah. And I think that um, it's to do with acting, it's to do with working with directors and finding out the way of playing that that isn't the cliche way. Mm -hmm. um, where you don't immediately go, there's something off with that guy. He's not sitting there going, <laughs> and your little puppies too. You know, he's not doing that. He's just a guy who's working for the king. Yeah. And he happens to be resentful because there's this whole working class lowborn thing mm -hmm. that people don't value in this universe. And yeah. he's going to teach them to value it. And uh, I, I think that was a good journey for him. Mm. That's the best kind of villain, right? The ones who you, you, you sort there's of understand. Yeah. There's yeah, a yeah, reason. Yeah. The, the more you can the think about the plausible. Well, of mm. course he wants his own, his own fort full of gold. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, he's got to feed, he's he's gotta feed his family. Yeah. You know, when you can make it plausible and credible, you kind of go, okay, yeah, I, I get that. <gasps> what has he done now? <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. that through line's important, yeah. <laughs> um, Joey, I wanted to ask about, uh, obviously there's big news broke recently of Henry Cavill leaving yeah, the show. Yeah, and I wondered, yeah, what was your, what was your initial reaction? How did you find out? What was that process? Um, um, well, I, Henry and I are quite close, and we yeah. um, and we uh, I knew a little bit before everyone else, really. But but to be honest, like it, the whole cast is just going. Uh, we're all going to miss him. He's yeah. worked so hard, and particularly on season three, we've just wrapped on season mm. three a couple of months ago. And the man is the hardest working man in all of Hollywood. So sorry, second second, <laughs> second hardest. Second. Second I'm the hardest, hardest man, working man in Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> Dudley, yeah, and uh, uh, Dudley Wood. Is that what we're calling it? <laughs> Dudley Wood. <laughs> Dudley Wood. Um, Lenny Wood. Lenny Wood. Uh, oh, that's got to start. Um, <laughs> But we're all gonna really miss, I'm gonna miss him. Um, mm. But honestly, like I was talking to Liam uh, a couple of weeks ago and um, he is on it. He's so yeah. excited to be, to be joining and we're all really excited to welcome this new and fresh energy. It's gonna be, it's gonna yeah. be wild. First of all about um, narrating, I wondered, cause you, you, it's a big part of your role this time around as well as on screen. Yeah. And was it a different kind of challenge? I feel like it must be a different kind of um, talent that's involved in bringing that to life. Well, you know, like it's kind of, it's kind of endemic in like being an actor, like storytelling, mm. right? Yeah. Like you're, that's really, and it's so much a part of the genre of fantasy, mm. is there being that, that kind of overarching voice that kind of connect and is the connective tissue. So, mm. it was, it was great because I, you really understand the function of the of the role as yeah. well as the imagination involved in it. Love that. Um, and you have a really special role because you know people. We already know that you're going to be in multiple aspects of the Witcherverse, not just this one show. Um, so how was it sold to you, this kind of role, this the importance and this unusual function compared to other characters? Well, I mean, again, it, it's su she's such a, or they, whatever they are, <laughs> she's, she's, a, she's everything and she's mm. the keeper of the stories, like somebody who, whose superpower is stories, mm. is fascinating and funny and great yeah. as an idea. When, and then when you start understanding how that really can impact and how our stories are what make us mm. and the stories that we choose to tell ourselves or that we tell about our culture or where we're from, like it's it's foundationally important. Yeah. So it was just great. And the fact that she's also an elf, yeah. you know, made it really, really <laughs> interesting and a very cool idea. Love that. Um, so, you know, your character changes form already a couple of times that we've seen in the show. And I wondered, do you see you as the true form, if that makes sense? Or is there a true form to this character or are they formless and adapting? How do you perceive that? I mean, Declan says that she's an ancient elf. So mm. it makes me feel like, or that the Skanaki is, they are ancient elves. But then, you know, when she first sees... Um, Joey's character, oh, yeah. she goes better, mm. which to me could also mean like, are you more comfortable with me looking like this? Yeah. Um, and perhaps that's, perhaps that that's it. That she's a shapeshifter, mm. which by virtue of that fact, what is your real, the way that you look? Yeah. So I don't know, and I wonder how much of your real self gets lost if you're constantly shifting, but. True, yeah. Declan called her an ancient elf, so maybe that mm. is the true version of her. But I'd quite like, I'd quite like for that to be up for, you know, 
yeah, yeah. that could change too. I love that it's four episodes. I found that was a really interesting decision because you know a lot of shows are, are much longer or like mm. it's longer than a film still. Can you talk me through the decision to have this more compact tale? Sure. Well, when we were chatting first, you know, about the world, there was sort of no rules. You know, will we do eight? Will we do six? You know, and then, you know, we kind of came up with, let's try and do around six, right? Mm. Um, but it was, the idea was to do two sort of movie-ish kind of, that feel, you know. And when we got in the editing room, you, the thing I, I always remember with great movies is, I, oh, this movie's great. And then it's three quarters way through and you start going, oh, man, <laughs> yeah. please don't do the thing. And then they go just that little bit too long. Mm. So it's one of that, especially because it's a road story and a revenge mm. story, you know, like a Seven Samurai, 13 Assassins thing. Yeah. You want it to be a good punch in the face, concise, mm. and you want to go through it and be taken on a ride. So I never wanted a, any bit where someone was going, like that. So yeah, in the editing yeah. room, it came out as four, so it was great. Love that. Yeah, it's yeah. super snappy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we, we had the advantage of it being a closed ended thing, so yeah. we could do whatever oh, you yeah. liked. I think it's um I think it's really it's really beautiful. It's described as a kind of a special a special event and a special in and of itself, this mm. series Blood Origin. Because I think that really speaks to the core of what we're doing with this piece of storytelling. And I think it's, because it is so obvi obviously intrinsically connected with the world of the Witcher as we know it through the series. Mm. But it's just a kind of a really, I think vivid and blazing snapshot into the continent and a completely different era and a completely yeah. different moment in time, completely different kind of moment in history. And I think it's just what it's going to do is really spark imagination around the kind of the breadth and the capacity of the Witcher universe because it's so mm. wide and ever evolving. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think that's a that's what's really special. Yeah. It's like a gem of a a little gem of a series. Yeah, yeah. like a like a roller coaster ride that doesn't have any bit where you're like. Phew. Never going on this again, <laughs> yeah. you know? That you're constantly like, ah, oh, ooh, ooh, yeah. yeah. And once you're on, you're on, you know? Mm, and definitely. you don't step off until the credits yeah, roll. The yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's supposed to be kind of a, a one and done in a sense, you know, it's a limited series, but I wondered, would you ever be interested in coming back in some capacity? Because, you know, there's time travel, there's flashbacks, there's so many possible ways to return. <laughs> I so mean, many possible yeah. ways. <laughs> Absolutely and always would be my answer to that. <laughs> yeah. I think um, Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> definitely it was the most special experience. It would be a total privilege. Um, I suppose we'll see where we'll see where it takes us. See where we'll it takes see where us. what yeah. emerges. But um fingers crossed. <laughs> so, so another question about Meldorf as well. Um I feel like, you know, her, her language she uses, you know, she's very direct, you know, oh, so, which I love. <laughs> um and I wondered, did you get to like improvise some of that or was that kind of all in the script, those um, more colourful moments? What I loved is that De Declan's incredible idea for Meldorf meant that she just poured off the page. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the writing just to be able to say them lines. And also Declan would run around set, Declan de Barrett, and run towards me and be like, change that line for this, I've just done another deal. What was, what was that like? There was one, so there's one where I'm like, to you, I'm like, if you fell into a bucket full of stoats, you, uh, no, no, into a bucket full of tits, you'd come <laughs> up holding a cock. <laughs> and that was just Declan de Barrett. And he came, he ran on set to say, say that. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> so it was just fun and joyful, and I think it's a different energy. She. Mm. To like, because it, you know, it's it's serious, it's high stakes, but to have Meldorf coming up with yeah, one line, as you said, it was fun. Yeah. Uh, no worries if you can't tell me, but I wondered, have you been told about a wider plan yet for your character in terms of where they might, you know, next pop up and appear? No, I oh, mean, okay. no, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that might be the case, but I thought I'd try. I mean, you know, um, no. all well, surprises. No problem. Um, what do you hope uh, people take away from watching The Witcher Blood Origin? Is there a particular feeling or message, perhaps, when they finished? I think there's something that Declan wrote that I, it really stayed with me and make is that we, you know, history is written by the victors, mm. and that is true in our human sapien culture. Yeah. Um, but I think it is really important, not just interesting, but important to go back and to vi revisit stories and really look and see if we have understood their entirety. I mean, mm. the fact that Columbus Day has now become Indigenous Peoples Day speaks to uh, not a revising of history, but actually going back and, and looking at it for what it actually was. So yeah. um, that's what I hope people take away is that stories are powerful and the stories we tell ourselves are powerful and maybe 
always go back and re-examine what you think uh, you know the truth of a story is. The fight scenes and the action scenes, because there's so much, it must be quite intense to film, I imagine, but then you've also dealing with a lot of CGI as well. So I wonder what's the kind of challenges of that for both of you? Mm. Gosh. We, <laughs> we, do you know what? We, I think, because um, we, we've been talking a little bit about the CGI element of it in particular, mm. and the kind of, the, the real leap of imagination, the feat of imagination that comes with doing that. Yeah. And it was such a blessing to be working with Zach and to be working mm. together on this because oh, I think it means that we could really conjure that magical landscape between us mm. and develop, yeah. develop it in our own imaginations in order to uh, yeah, translate it in performance, I think. And yeah. I, I can't wait to see that final puzzle piece mm. kind of fitted in right. when we watch the final show. I think it's going right. to be magic. Because <laughs> you talk about like what it is that you might be doing or where yeah. you're going to be standing, but then so much of what it looks like is dependent on what is added in afterwards. So, you know, yeah, you suspend yeah. your disbelief or you harness your imagination, whichever one fits, and yeah. then. I guess you just run with it. Completely. Yeah. And yeah. a huge testament to the writing team as well, to Declan and the writing team, because yeah. so much of it is in the text. So much yeah. of the, you know, amazing, evocative, brilliant images is, is right there for us to feed off of as well. Um, and in terms of the action stuff, we, we just had a great time. I think we really we threw ourselves yeah. into it. I definitely did. did. I quite literally threw myself into it sometimes. <laughs> <You did. laughs> <laughs> Which is great. Yeah. It's super fun. It is. It is jam packed with yeah, action and fight scenes and some, what, just beautiful movement from, yeah. you know, I mean, whether it's fighters or there's a great army, you know, that, mm, it's, yeah, some yeah, of those scenes the ensemble are. Ensemble stuff is really epic, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was great fun. I think it makes for such a kind of like uh, all consuming totally involved immersive experience as an actor mm. as well, which is a real gift. Yeah, it's exciting, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I wanted to ask about um, which of us, uh, would you ever want to come back? Because obviously this is kind of a one and done in a way, but could you ever see yourself coming back in some capacity? I think if there was another character, maybe there's another character of Bello came back in another guise. Mm. I, I, I don't know, it's an extraordinary place to be mm. where everybody swears a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think it's exciting, you know, there's a thrill to it. And, um, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of hard work you, you've described, and there's a lot of fighting. Um, so physically, it's hard work. Mm. Um, but I would love to do something in this in this milieu again, because this is my jam. Yeah. Oh, I'm amazing. like, I can see myself in a, lo <laughs> in a loincloth with a broadsword. You got Come on. Yeah. I frequently do. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not talk constantly. about your leisure okay, time I'm so now. Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just stick to the work. <laughs>